Last night I went juggling and I filmed a new trick and I posted a video in my club classroom series, trick number 11 in that series, it looks a bit like this. Three clubs off the foot, kicking up into five clubs. It's pretty good and uh, I knew it was pretty good even when I was doing it because people around me were kind of like stopping, them juggling and watching me do the trick and afterwards quite a few people said to me, hey, pretty good trick, uh, I really like that. Someone even said, make sure that you send me a link to this video afterwards. Uh, and that doesn't happen very often at Berlin juggling clubs, mainly because when you're at a Berlin juggling club, like if I'm there, like Christoph Buch is over there doing seven club juggling and Guillaume Karpovitz is doing like five Diablos there and Jacob Sharp is over here, he's doing crazy stuff as well. So that anybody paid any attention to me was pretty good. But then on Facebook, someone commented, someone commented nice, someone commented too late, I already voted. That's by Daniel there. Uh, which brings me on to the topic of today's video. I said I would be doing this uh, and that is I'm going to uh, talk a little bit about the process of how I count votes and how the chart is compiled for the top 40 jugglers of the year. Now, that question that Daniel had too late, I already voted. I actually replied to him, I said, um, anyone can vote again at any time, only your last comment is counted. The way it works is that uh, every uh, time someone comments on, a, uh, on, the, on the video, on the voting video, I get an email from YouTube and as, I, as they come in, I check them to make sure that they're actually a set of names that someone wants to vote for. If someone is just making a comment on somebody else's comment or just a general comment saying, hey, I hope the chart is good this year, those just get into a different folder. Which means that if you want to vote again, uh, you can do so. Anyone can vote any number of times only the last set of names that you submit will be counted. So that's it. Just if you want to vote again, not on this video, go to the other video, the original uh, Top 40 Jugglers of 2016 video and uh, yeah, and just put in another 10 names, enter it and your first set of votes will be flagged up in the script and uh, and they won't be counted. So the way it comes in is that the, uh, the emails come in and what I do is I gather all the emails together into, uh, into a folder of uh, of emails called Voting Top 40 2016. And if you actually look over here, I don't use this email app that often, except there's Gmail stuff comes in, and then look at that. So I've got votes for the top 40 going all the way back to 2009. Uh, and then what I do is I go up here very easily, go to File, and then Save As, and, and I just save it as new activity on your video, save it as uh, plain text. And that's pretty much the way it works. I'm not gonna do that now because it takes quite a long time. So then I go across uh, and open up this uh, development thing called PyCharm. So I've got a script here called Top 40 Basher for English Emails 2016. And I have to have a different one of these scripts for every year. Um, I guess I could write something that works generally, but every year things change. And what really changes is that YouTube and Google, they format the emails that they send me differently. Every year, you've heard me say, please, please, please put uh, 10 names on 10 different lines. And uh, the reason is that it's because it's really easy for me to count them. Every name is just separated out. Uh, and then what happened is that YouTube started displaying these comments, not one name per line. It would just put them all after each other. But the emails that I got from YouTube, it would still be all separated until this year when instead of getting it all separated, everything just comes in on one line. Now I did have in a previous script a way to get around this. If more than one name was coming in, it was a really long, long stream. I was like, well, that's obviously more than one name. And so it would go through and try and pick out names from one line. And so this year I've had to expand that out. So every email is just checked. So now what arrives from Google and YouTube is an email which when it's exported to text looks a bit like this. This is the person who's voted and then this is the long list of names all in one thing. So I have to write a script or modify the script to get those names out. And the way it does it, it just looks at that and tries to spot jugglers. And you think, well, how is it, who does it know? Who does it know is a juggler? Well, it turns out I've got around about 13 and now 14 years worth of voting information. So I have got a really, really big spelling dictionary. So let's quickly have a look at this spelling dictionary. So it is just a list of names, starting off with some names that we know there, Aaron Gregg, Aaron Kemp, Aaron Tobias and stuff like that. Lots of people I don't know at all, like uh, who is who is Adam Chemis? I don't know, Adam Cariotis, I know him. So these are people who've been voted for over the years and all of the variant spellings over the last years as well. And uh, so what I do is put this in, you think how many people have ever been voted for? Well, we can just look down to the bottom of the spelling dictionary and we get all the way down to some non-normal characters with Lucas and whoever this is, 
I don't know. But look at that, that's 2,226 people have been voted for so far. One of the interesting things of having a uh, uh, a spelling dictionary like I do here um, is that I can see all the different variant names and so I wrote a little script this afternoon very very simple thing which uh, when I do this it just looks at all of the uh, all of the names that come through and it tells me whose names have been spelt correctly or incorrectly and how many people have spelt different names differently so if we go all the way to the top we can see the number one most misspelled name if I scroll all the way up to the top is of course Horvard Fidsden, and so we have Horvard Fidsden, Harvard, Horvard Fidsden, Horvard Fidsden, Horvard Fidsden, Horvard Vatland Fidsden, Horvard Vatland, Lauga, Lauga Benjaminson, Lauga Benjaminson, Lauga Spin Benjaminson, Lauga Benjamin, Alexander Koblikov, Alexander Koblikov, Koblikov, Alexander Koblikov, Patrick Elmnert, Patrick Elbert. 29 different spellings of his name so far, and counting, because it'll only go up in the future. So anyway, what happens around about then? It looks through, it finds names, and uh, if it can't, doesn't have a name, it actually comes up with something a bit like this. So example, this is, the, this is what it's looking for here. These are the names it's already found, but there's one name left over, Chris Just, who isn't so far in the spelling dictionary, or at least not that spelling. So what I'll do is I'll just copy that name, Chris Jost, okay, like this, and then what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna go over to the spelling dictionary and I'll just see if I can find anyone called uh, Chris Jost in the past. And as you look here, Chris Ballinger, no, 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 nobody is there at all, okay? And uh, nobody is there, so I'll put Chris uh, Jost right in the right place here. Pretty good. And then what I'm going to do is I'll run the script again. Now Chris Joss will actually be down here at the bottom. If I look at the voting down here, we'll probably be able to find Chris Joss again somewhere here, and he will have a vote next to, next to his name, as we can see right there. So that is Chris Joss into the spelling dictionary. Very, very easy for me to do. So what it does, it looks for any names. If it can't find 10 names, and it still has some things left over which aren't names, it has a look here. So it says, oh, Catherine Pancakes voted for Asif Moore, Harvard Fidsden, Lewis Kennedy, Sagi Bracha, and it's all in there, but she spelt it uh, Asif Moore with an extra E, and uh, so that's what the that extra E is there. Both spelling variants are actually there in the spelling dictionary, but the correct spelling gets picked up first, so that's it. And so it finds that. So if it can't find 10 votes, uh, it, sh it shows me what's left over, and if there's anything left over, that's probably a name that isn't there. Um, of course, when all this voting is done and the voting is closed, I'll go back through and check these kind of things again but it's a pretty good system. So the next big question is what happens if someone votes for more than 10 names? This is actually really easy. What it does, it just looks through and starts deleting names from the end of the email and only counts the first 10 names that it finds. And it actually flags that up and tells me that it's happening. So Jaws QM voted for 11 jugglers and Nino Topo was was not counted. Uh, and other times if someone votes for only one person, like my vote is for Mark Schneider, Mark Schneider is counted in that person's votes, and then my vote is for is not counted. Anyway, all of this gets put in together, and down at the bottom it shows the results. However, I'm not going to show the results on screen, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to go across here and load up the 2015 results, and we'll see it spit out the 2015 results. It's a slightly different program here, so don't worry about that. Voting for the same juggler twice, you can't vote for the same juggler twice. If you try to, it won't work at all. So. As it comes through, the script comes through, and if we scroll back up, we actually then see the final final results. It says here, total voters last year, 558 people voted, 4,848 votes in total, and we can see it was very close at the top of the chart. Uh, and then it scrolls down, and you can see the person who was down at the bottom of the chart. Then I copy this information and I move it across into a spreadsheet and this is the spreadsheet 2000, it's called 2003 to 2010 just because I haven't changed the name yet but this shows everybody's votes all the way through the years and uh, not all names are included in this but everyone who's ever been on the chart is included here in this spreadsheet and it shows everybody's how many votes that they got and all of the uh, positions that they had on the chart. Now there are some other things that go into the process, for example system to check for fraudulent votes and uh, and people trying to do vote stuffing. I'm not going to go into those details because of course it just allows that it just opens up the system for abuse and I don't want to make it too easy for people to do vote stuffing. Um, the other question is what happens if two people get the same amount of votes? Well when I put it into the spreadsheet here I actually check 
who was higher up in the chart last year and they are put below the person who was lower in the chart last year, uh, depending on how many uh, votes that they had if they were outside the chart, which pretty much means if anyone is equal, the person who was higher last year is penalized. So the people on the way down the chart are penalized and the people on the way up the chart get that little extra boost. And so that's it, that's the system really. Uh, I have the top 40 names, or I will do once it's all done. I'll check through all the um, votes and things again just to make sure everything is, everything is correct. And then I've got to present the results. And I'm not quite sure how I'm gonna do that. But it's up to you watching here if you want to comment here on this video how you'd like to see me present the results because I've done it in so many different ways but some people in the past who have said hey why don't you do this why don't you do that I've actually taken those suggestions on board for example last year someone said hey why don't you let someone else do it and I'm like I know just the person and uh, previously someone said what you should do is you should copy a trick or a routine or a video of every single other person in the uh, in the chart and I did that as well and you know what that was pretty hardcore uh, and I hopefully find something which doesn't take that much effort uh, this year because I want to release the uh, end of the results before March. Anyway, so uh, what you should do is, you know, if you want to vote again, vote again. If you haven't voted yet, vote for me. Anyway, hope you enjoyed this. I'll uh, do some more vlogs in the future about this and of course I'll be presenting the results. So like, comment, subscribe, say what you want, say how you want me to show the results later on down here in the comments and I'll catch you next time.